Well, a group of left-wing activists in Chicago is training itself for war. It's called the Haymaker Collective, and it says that Donald Trump's election has caused a surge of fascist violence in America, and they want to establish their own anti-fascist gym to teach the left how to fight back. Nyla is a member of the Haymaker Collective and is a participant in the new gym project. It's not a real name, by the way, but a pseudonym we were given. Nyla joins us tonight. Nyla, thanks a for coming on. Thank you for having me. So, um, I'm, I'm here to take you seriously. You're starting a gym to prepare yourself for the coming war, for the conflict? Where what are you preparing yourself for? The, the conflict has already been established. We've seen since 2016 there's been a 20% increase in hate crimes, both nationally and in the city of Chicago. We know that there are certain bodies that are vulnerable to attack, that there's been an increase in racism and xenophobia, and that we feel that it's necessary for us to learn self-defense skills so rather than feeling fright frightened and isolated and alone that we can come together build strength in solidarity with one another with an autonomous gym formation look i'm for free association i'm for gyms i'm not i guess against this i just sort of wonder if your concern isn't misplaced i mean chicago is a really dangerous place i think you've had about two thousand shootings so far just this year I don't think any of them are perpetrated by right-wingers that I know of or Trump supporters, any of them. So maybe well, you've got other things to worry about. Well, according to statistics, we do have something to worry about. The Cato Institute records that the vast majority of violent extremism comes from white, right-wing white nationalists. We uh -huh. also know that, 80, that according to statistics, 80% of deadly terrorist incidents that happen within the United States are perpetuated by people who feel that other bodies, any pe a different people, races, and religions don't belong. Right. So when I think about the threats that I'm facing, those are made up. I'm so for worth, I mean, I don't want to interrupt you, but those are totally made up statistics, and you should spend some time looking at them. But let me just ask you this: of the 2,000 you are welcome in Chicago, to look at. You are oh, no, welcome I'm, to look at the statistics. Okay. They're provided right. by the Cato Institute. They're also right. provided by a California State University. I, right. oh, I oh, well, also have done. a number of statistics got, that are provided there. by. But let me just ask you the this: the Southern just, Poverty you, Law Center. Okay. Oh, okay. Kind of the bottom line, I guess. Um, but if we could just bring it from the national to the local. You live in Chicago, which as I just said, I think, and I think this is a correct statistic, has had about 2,000 murders just in the first seven months, less than seven months of the year. How many, uh, rather shootings, how many of those 2,000 shootings were perpetrated by right-wingers, do you think? Um, again, you can look at the Chicago Police Department. They do collect information, but we're, in, we're more interested in the hate crimes that have been occurring were, were any to people of them? like myself. Okay, right, but I mean, when people are shooting each 2,000 people, okay, shot, and I don't think any of them were biased crimes against people like you, as you just put it. I don't think any of those were Trump supporters pulling the trigger. Do you know otherwise? Car Carlson, if you don't know, then I'm not going to sit here and give you statistics, but I will tell you that the stories that are making me afraid and no careful, is the answer, when I take actually. the bus, no, uh -huh. when I take the bus home alone by myself on public transportation, I don't feel safe because just May 26th in Portland on the light, right, light rail, there were two black women who were approached and confronted by a white man who calls himself a patriot. Three other white men came to those two women's defense and they were stabbed in the neck and two of them died. Right, when no, no, I saw the, the story. It was an awful story, but, but, but I'm just saying in the city that you live in, because you don't live in Portland, Oregon, you live in Chicago, Illinois, again, I made the point, but you've had 2,000 shootings and none of them were by Trump supporters, but that doesn't bother you, but a stabbing on a train in Portland, Oregon is the reason you're afraid to ride the train in Chicago. It seems a little bit disassociated. Where are you on the question well, of gun Tucker, ownership? I mean, well, Tucker, here's the thing. First of all, uh, on the question of what we're doing, we're providing a self-defense gym so that people I'm may learn I mean, martial I'm not arts. That. Yep. So that then, so that people can learn martial arts, so people like me don't feel like they can't ride public transportation or right, go to their I'm houses of worship. I'm not a shrink or anything, but I'm just worried that your fears may be a little bit then, overblown. Like you've got a terrible gang problem in Chicago, but that doesn't does that scare you at all? Like if you were to go to the south well, side of Chicago, would you be worried about Trump supporters down there? Uh, Tucker, I already live on the south side, number one. Number two, I'm... How many um, Trump supporters in your neighborhood? 
Quite a few. I'm sure you can look it up. But on the question of gun ownership, we can look that even how owning a gun doesn't protect one. Philando Castile was a licensed gun owner, and he told yeah. that to the officer while he was shot on Facebook Live in front of his four-year-old daughter and his partner. So right. the question so, so you don't, gun ownership you don't... should be something that should you should be giving to the National Rifle Association as to why they're not taking Wait, can I ask a question? Can, can I ask a question? If, if so, you're like against the system, and you think the system is rotten and racist and all that stuff, but you want only the cops and other government officials who you believe are racist to have guns? How does that work exactly, Nyla? I don't understand your question. What we're saying well, is that so there's no political Well, so if you no think America is institutionally racist, why do you think only government officials, police, National Guard, soldiers, ought to have guns? I mean, why wouldn't you want a gun, too? I don't understand well, why you're our, against private again, gun ownership if you think our country is racist. If you're bringing me on your show to talk about the project that we're starting, the project we're starting is a self-defense gym so that people can learn hand-to-hand self-defense I got tactics. it. It's just like guns so are more are... effective than karate chops, so I'm just sort of wondering where you were on the gun thing. Okay, well, on the question of guns, we don't have an answer because what we're doing is starting a project with where okay. we are. And what we need to, we know is that we need to grow strength together. We have to learn okay. the responses physically to respond to some of these incidents that are happening. Okay. The question for me, again, is not on the qu uh, people sh shooting me with guns. The question is incidents like Nabra Hassanin, who was murdered while she was walking from her mosque in Washington, D.C. to a McDonald's for breakfast with a group of other teenagers. Was a she killed by a Trump supporter? Oh, oh she wasn't was she, I thought she was killed by an illegal alien, wasn't she? She, she was killed by a man who decided to go after her with oh, a bat. Oh, yeah, that was not a Trump teenagers. supporter, actually. That was an illegal alien. <laughs> bad example. I'm sure there well, were others. Now, we're out of time. Unfortunately, well, Carson, it was great to I talk to I you. I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs>